So David Torres versus Michael Colum. David Torres versus Michael Colum. Looks like Columbe, but pronounced Colum. This is the Democratic primary for the Congressional District, the 5th Congressional District. This isn't just some state shit. This isn't just state senator, state representative. This is America. This is the United States Congress. So this is, they're going straight to the top. So they want to be a representative in the U.S. Congress. Here's David Torres. Consequently, decreases voter turnout in each and every election. Rank choice voting is basically you get your ballot, you rank every single candidate from your favorite to your least favorite. Sometimes there's five candidates, sometimes there's 20 candidates. Nevertheless, you rank them first to last based on who you want to see elected. So they get all the ballots. So that's David Torres and if we had 20 candidates, we didn't have to rank all 20 of them. And in fact, you could just do top three, top five. But uh, ranked choice voting, that's the cherry on top. Colorado's got one of the best democracies. David Torres, he appreciates the democracy that Colorado has. He's going to walk into D.C. basically expecting the rest of the 49 states to catch up to Colorado's level of democracy, which is smart. We got same day voter registration, open primaries, written ballots, referendum, initiative, and recall. David Torres is pro term limits. He's pro ranked choice voting. He's pro assault weapons ban. David Torres is pro choice. He's pro labor, pro unions, and pro employee free choice act, EFCA. He's pro term limits because they're old as fuck. Those representatives are a bunch of fossils, I say. Pro assault weapons ban, but not rifles, shotguns, or pistols. Right? Keep the rifles, keep the shotguns, keep the pistols, but anything above and over. You don't need your tanks, you don't need your mortars, you don't need, you know, a nuke or a helicopter, you don't need, you know, a couple F 15s, a rifle, a shotgun, a pistol. Hell, just a, a big stick, really. Just. Michael Colum, he wanted a gun bill too. So both David Torres and Michael Colum want a gun bill. They're both pro-choice, pro-labor, pro-union. He's The Employee Free Choice Act would call for a union vote in all the businesses in the country. And I think if we the people actually had a safe voting haven for a union, I think most businesses would support a union. Now David Torres, he's both black and white. And brown. He's all three, just like most Puerto Ricans. There's African roots there. There's Spanish from Spain, the white Spaniards, and then Taino, the natives of the island. So that's black, white, brown. Now there's Arawaks. I thought there was Arawaks on San Salvador. There's the Taino and the Arawaks, and so I wonder if there are Arawaks on the on Puerto Rico, on the island of Puerto Rico too. So over. One year, David Torre says that you got 40,000 bills that are introduced in U.S. Congress. You got 40,000 bills which are introduced. Now, you had Michael Colum who had said that he was going to get three bills passed. I want to say a gun bill. Was it education and health care? I'm not for sure. But he was going to get three bills total passed, which I like that. That's a good goal. It's reasonable. You manage expectations. But David Torres says that's a little on the light side. He says that's a little on the light side. So I guess that means David Torres is going to pass at least four bills in his first year. How many bills are you going to pass in your second year, David Torres? David Torres didn't have, he said he didn't have any real thoughts on Will Smith and Chris Rock. But the, you get him talking a little bit and he seemed to defend Will Smith. Though David Torres did say that Jada... Had a bunch to do, you know, with the whole thing. Jada Pinkett Smith had a bunch to do with the whole thing. David Torres kept calling me brother, which is cool. 
He also said on the saying that he loves the public, the people. And since I'm one of the people, I guess I get his love. And he calls me brother, which is cool. We're brothers. In God's eyes, we're all, we're all brothers and sisters anyways. A brother from another Danny Glover. Isn't that the, uh, <laughs> isn't that the expression? Hey, I'm just another brother from another Danny Glover. David Torres, Michael Klum, they're both pro $5 billion to house the homeless, to solve the homelessness issue. We got 330 million people and only half a million are homeless. How come 330 million can't take care of a half a million tiny homes? 330 million, we can't get it. Ridiculous. He likes the spirit, David Torres. That was both Michael Colum and David Torres, or, you know, they don't like homelessness. It'd be awesome to get rid of homelessness at least for one moment in America. Not start a business, I guess, but just, you know, April 1st, 2023, if you're an American, you get a home. And $5 billion, it's a lot to the layperson, but we just spent $850 billion on the empire. And Michael Colum said we're not winning hearts and minds. So we spent $850 billion on the empire. What if we'd spend that on domestic programs? $850 billion, my God. Not only could we get everybody homes, but everybody could get a car and a boat and a plane and a, and a pistol and a rifle and a shotgun. David Torres likes the spirit of my internet for all plans who... We could shutter public schools. I said, internet for everybody so we can shut down these public schools. Just a waste of money. So he likes the spirit of it because we can self-educate. And how much more powerful is self-education? He said with COVID, we basically can do remote learning. With COVID, we see that we can, you know, educate using the internet. But David Torre says that public schools... Still have a place in our society. We just need to love our public schools more. Fund the teachers and classrooms adequately. Get more involved. Get more attention. Public schools are what we as a society make of them. And so he likes. He wants to keep public schools around. So that was my most out there question. Now Michael Cologne. Already did a highlight piece on him. But just to kind of. Review, summarizer, comparing and contrasting here, right? So Michael Colum, he's Mr. Navy, Mr. Air Force. Here's Michael Colum. So Mr. Navy, Mr. Air Force. He said the big thing that he's got is that he's got that intense federal government experience, which David Torres does not have. Michael Colum. He's also anti-child abuse, which I never got to with David Torres. I asked him different questions, mostly. On Ukraine, Palestine, and Yemen, that was a similar question. Michael Colum knew more, and he was right on Ukraine, and I would say kind of wrong on Palestine and Yemen. But because of his background and his experience, I heard him out. I listened to what he had to say. And you know, it's kind of crazy when it comes to Palestine. Most people say there's two sides to every story. How come people don't say that with Israel and Palestine? Nah, there's only one side to that story. <laughs> there's actually, you know, infinite. There's dozens and dozens sides to every story. Look at Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Everybody's got a side to that, right? Even Amber Heard's got 20 sides to her side. So, Michael Colon, he's right on Ukraine. Wrong on Palestine and Yemen. But he knew what was going on. Or he had an idea. And so, for David Torres, he needs a better answer on Palestine and Yemen for November. He says he can only change what he can change. Which is true, right? He isn't going to get into Congress and change the entire world. He can maybe pass a bill or two. But he can help with American foreign policy. U.S. foreign policy is something that Michael Colomb and David Torres could do. They could force all the troops to come back home until Congress declares the war or stop all the wars until Congress declares the war. According to our Constitution, 
Only Congress has the power, the war powers. Only Congress has war powers. So therefore, we've been allowing our presidents to go to war on borrowed time, borrowed authority, borrowed treasure since 1945. That's horseshit. Congress can stop all that. With the power of the purse, that's how we got out of Vietnam. And we don't have to pull the funding out of everything and just, you know, we can have a nice smooth transition for any of this. And we can reauthorize, you know, things too. Michael Colomb served in both the Air Force and the Navy. He's saved 15 lives over his Lifetime, how many people can say they saved any lives? Michael C. Colum doesn't believe that the U.S. Empire is winning hearts and minds around the world. Michael C. Colum considers himself a liberator, a rescuer. He liked the phrase, guide the change. Now, Michael Colum wanted me to check into the real story of Mark Luttrell. Josh Apple, Chris Bartocki, or Bortorki. Mark Luttrell, this is Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor, you had Mark, Mark Wahlberg. I saw the movie. Mark Wahlberg had just fallen down a hill and he just kept falling down the damn hill and he just wouldn't stop and just kept falling down the damn hill. <laughs> and then his whole team got killed and he was the lone survivor. Now he wanted me to look into the real story of Mark Luttrell because I guess he knew Josh Apple and he knew some other guys. So he knew he's also around that Bundy takeover of that, um, that beekeeper place or what was that, that bird sanctuary in Oregon. So he was around them, you know, damn Bundys. And what the you know, oh, they're taking our way of life. Their way of life is letting their cattle, they have a bunch of cattle, so they got capital. They got, they're allowing their capital to go around our parks shitting on everything. Shitting on the parks, shitting on the water, shitting on the people, shitting on the roads, shitting on everything. We're supposed to let the cows, what, shit on our cops and shit on our fire departments and shit on our schools and shit on our libraries and everything else too it's our way of, nobody's taking your way of life motherfucker why don't you leave them damn cows on your own fucking property you think you could run your cows on our parks and even if that's that's okay, can we, you know, can I go for a walk in the park? Can I take a little sip of the cow shitted up water? Can I take a swim in the water that the cow shits in? No? So you're stopping my way of life for your fake pretend. It's a national park. It's all of our fucking land, you pieces of shit. They're taking our national parks for their cattle drives. <coughs> and they're taking 40 to 80 to 90 percent of the damn water. If these are actually Christians, make sure we all got cows and make sure we all have plenty of water, not just for our families, but for our pets and our plants and our cows too. We don't need to see water for your plants. You got water for your cows and your family, but your plants, oh no. Supposed to be worried about that? Water is life, you pieces of shit. If you're Christians, you would want everybody to have water to question water reclamation. Or you fucking ridiculous. At least John Nofsker knows that collecting rainwater is okay. <laughs> That's... You know, he's a Christian. That Presbyterian, he's on water reclamation, at least on that policy. He's being a consistent Christian. So the real story of Mark Luttrell, I just got a couple notes here. So apparently the Navy SEALs didn't die because they spared civilians. The SEALs were spotted by the Taliban. As soon as they were inserted by the, you know, via helicopter. So the Navy SEALs didn't die because of mistakes. They died because the Taliban was better. They easily tracked the SEALs. They quickly outmaneuvered the SEALs. And they thoroughly outgunned the SEALs. So the reason why 
Mark Luttrell's unit, all of them were able to get shot up and killed. Was it because of any mistakes? It's just, except for the Taliban spotted them. So that was from a guy named Gulab. He claims the locals said the Taliban here knew of the SEAL's location, even watched as they interacted with the goat herders they spared. Now, there's also Mark Luttrell did not kill 35 Taliban. In fact, the Naval Special Warfare estimates that the SEALs had killed about 35 Taliban during their firefight. Gulab scoffs at that. According to Newsweek, Gulab does not believe the number was exaggerated. Gulab says it's completely fabricated, totally made up, total bullshit. The local villagers and the American military never found any Taliban corpses after combing the mountains. So according to Gulab, it was zero. They killed zero Taliban. Andrew McManus, a former Marine colonel who helped draw up the mission, was on scene during the search and recovery effort for the dead SEALs. Another military personnel says there were no reports of any enemy casualties, according to Newsweek. I've been at the location where he was ambushed multiple times. I've had Marines wounded there. I've been in enough firefights to know that when shit hits the fan, it's hard to know how many people are shooting at you, but there weren't 35 enemy fighters in all of the Karingal Valley that day, said Patrick Kinzer, a former Marine infantry officer who participated in Operation Red Wings. He participated. Everybody died in Operation Red Wings. Which is, except for Mark Luttrell. And then the last thing, Mark Luttrell did not run, av run out of ammunition. In the book Lone Survivor, Mark Luttrell says he fired round after round until he was almost out of his ammunition. Gulab contests that account, saying that when he found and rescued Mark Luttrell, he still had his combat load. 11 full magazines. So he hadn't fired a shot? <laughs> so those are some um, pretty big holes in the story there. Gulab, he rescued Marcus Luttrell. Gulab rescued Marcus Luttrell. And Gulab is saying that he had 11 full magazines. Which, I don't know. Maybe he had more magazines. 11 doesn't seem... I mean, what, 11... But it said his full load is insinuating that he didn't shoot any. I feel like he could have shot one magazine, but still had 11 full magazines. And then 35 Taliban. How do you, I mean, basically, this, this story is so wrong. How do you go from, I shot all my bullets, I killed 35 Taliban, and... We messed up because we spared civilians. There's a goat herder, and when we spared the goat herder, the goat herder ran down to the village and told what was happening. So we shouldn't spare civilians. Is that the lesson of Lone Survivor? No, that's not. The Navy SEALs got shot up, not because they spared that goat herder. They were watching them talk to that goat herder, apparently. And then when they released him, then they decided to go ahead and attack. So I guess because they had a hostage, they were going to respect it. But then like, well, shit, they just released their damn hostage. So basically the Taliban were better than the SEALs. The SEALs didn't kill 35 Taliban. They killed nobody. They didn't shoot all their ammo. In fact, they barely shot any ammo. And they killed nobody. And all of them got killed except for one. So that's uh, much different than the official version. So, I don't know. Marcus Luttrell, Hollywood, the military industrial complex. Where in the hell's WikiLeaks? I thought WikiLeaks was trying to... Didn't WikiLeaks used to expose this kind of crap? Ah, we don't need the truth to understand reality so we can... You know, live. <laughs> so it's written ballots. You can go vote right now. Election day, June 28, 2022. A lot of people wait till election day, but seven days from now. Today's Tuesday, 6 21, 2022. Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. What was that uh, summer? That's summer, isn't it? June 28th, seven days away. 
Make sure you only vote one time and vote at the precinct that you live in. So you got written ballots. You could go vote right now or wait till election day. But you got from now till election day to turn your vote in. David Torres is pro force the vote. David Torres is pro universal health care. David Torres is pro withholding his vote for Nancy Pelosi as House Speaker in order to put universal health care on the House floor for a vote. Just for a vote, up or down. Both David Torres and Michael Colum are pro dreamers. Both David Torres and Michael Colum are pro choice. Both David Torres and Michael Colum are pro democracy. David Torres really admires Colorado's democracy. David Torres says our leadership are fossils. He's 43 years old. The average, he, he knew the average age of America, said it was like in the 30s, and Congress is like in the 70s. So Congress doesn't represent America at all. David Torres is pro term limits, pro assault weapons ban, pro choice, pro labor, pro unions. Pro-Employee Free Choice Act, pro in the war on drugs. He was opposed to the Iraq War. And David Torres is definitely in favor of collecting rainwater. Because, you know, duh, no shit, Sherlock. Without fucking water, if you don't have water, if you're a working class family in America and you don't have water, go get yourself some water. From anywhere. From anybody. Go get yourself water. And tell them Johnny Master sent you. David Torres was born in Puerto Rico. He says Puerto Rico is 50-50 on becoming a U.S. state. He says that it's clearly in America's self-interest to adopt Puerto Rico. It's clearly in America's self-interest. But since David Torres was born in Puerto Rico, he moved to Colorado when he was four years old. So this is all he's known. He can understand both sides of the issue in his home nation. Some want to preserve their Puerto Rican culture there. While others embrace the idea of American statehood. David Torres had moved to Colorado when he was four years old. And he said he connected with the people here right away. The people here in the Centennial State. Apparently they also spoke Spanish. So. David Torres. Is a good man. They're both good men. The fifth. Congressional district have two good men to choose from on the Democratic side in the Democratic primary. I don't know what the hell the Republicans are doing, but there's five of them, so it's heavily contested. If that Doug Lamborn is able to maintain, how long has he been in there since 1846 or something? 1847? There you go. That's David Torres. That's David Torres. His policies and platforms compared a little bit to Michael Colum. So good luck, America. Good luck.